Hello? There it is, Steve. Uh, hope I didn't wake you up. I just came home and was wondering if everything worked out all right. Hi, Steve. Yes, we made the deadline. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I feel so bad you couldn't make it. Hope you guys had a nice Labor Day party. Oh, yes. I mean, the band was great, and Mike fell in the pool. <laughs> oh, and then Roy got really sick. No, wait, Brian. And then he fell in the pool, too. He... No, Roy, uh, wait. Ah, well, I'll tell you all about it at work tomorrow morning. Well, <laughs> afternoon. I, I won't be there for two weeks, remember? Oh, wait, yeah, but, uh, but do you really have to? <laughs> two weeks is a lifetime. Yeah, Steve, I really have to. But I will continue testing for Addit. Oh, okay, right, awesome. Um, you know, I better get some sleep now. My plane leaves early in the morning. Okay, Meredith. Have a wonderful flight. I, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for picking me up, Mr. Coleman. Mr. Coleman? Please, just call me Frank. We're colleagues now, after all. Well, okay, Frank. Thanks so much for making time for me on Labor Day. No problem, Meredith. Postal workers always have each other's back. Your dad helped me dozens of times whenever I was in a bit of a pickle. Well, I hope I can fill his shoes. He hardly ever missed a day. I'm sure you'll do great. You know what? While we're en route, why don't we deliver some mail in our beautiful little lake town? And show me the ropes? Sure. All right then, get ready to roll. This lake, it's always more beautiful than I remember it. I don't think I'll ever get tired of driving around it. And there's our first stop. Okay, sir, what's the plan? Delivering mail is like a walk in the park with mailboxes. Take this bag, walk to the mailbox, and insert the mail. Here's your mail. Nothing too difficult, right? I think I should be able to face the challenge. Ha, <laughs> I bet. Didn't you go to MIT? Yeah. I left here from Massachusetts uh, 22 years ago. Shouldn't you get a job in computers then? That's really booming right now. Well, actually, I'm, um, uh... Hold that thought. We just arrived at our next address. It's a package this time, so you'll have to get it out of the back. Leave it on the doorstep. That's the last of them.
You're getting the hang of it. So, where were we? Computers. Should I buy one? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to use it for. Bookkeeping. I always make a mess of my tax returns. Can't a computer do that for me? Sure, there are programs for that. But you'll still have to put in some work yourself. I was afraid you were going to say that. I'll bug you about it another time. Our next address is right around the corner. Ah, there's no place like home. Sure isn't. Can't wait to get home either. The Mets are playing the Giants. Oh, before I get out, what time do I start tomorrow? 7 a.m. sharp. Just check in at the post office. Okay, Frank. See you tomorrow. Adios. Hi, Meredith. I just wanted to let you know that Dad and I landed safely. <sighs> the Florida weather is all they said it would be. I'll call again soon. Oh, oh, one more thing. The freezer's stuffed with food and there's blueberry pie in the fridge. Bye. Meredith, it's Steve. I didn't get the chance to say it earlier, but thanks so much for being a trooper. I know you had other plans for Labor Day weekend, but nailing the deadline for added 87 could very well be the most important milestone in our company's history. Enjoy your well-deserved time off. Don't get too used to it. Just kidding. Or am I? Uh, I'll talk to you later. Good morning, Meredith. Ready for your first day? Good morning, Frank. Ready to rock. It's a great day to be on the road. I already filled up the mailbag in the truck, so you're good to go. Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's a map in the cabin, in case you get lost. <laughs> Thanks, I'll probably need that. Bon voyage! What on earth did these folks order? Can I help you? Hello. Here's today's mail. Hmm. New in town. Your face looks familiar. Well, I grew up here and then left for college 22 years ago. <sighs> 22 years ago, back when they called me Nancy Sinatra instead of Nancy Reagan. So now you're back, huh? I know what it's like. You do? It's best not to feel bad about it. Only a few people ever really make it. 
I wonder if it's gonna rain today. It's been raining a lot lately. This is the old Sugarman place, but the envelope says McGill. Must have moved away. Stan's Diner. Wait, it's called Moe's Diner now? Meredith Wise? As I live and breathe. Come here, hon. Uh, now, let me look at you. My, oh my, a few lines here and there, and the occasional gray hair. But by gosh, it's you, all right. Wow, Maureen, long time no see. I feel so old. Oh, don't be like that now. It suits you. Age only makes a person more distinguished, is what I always say. To the mirror. Now come here. Tell me everything. Okay. One quick drink, then. I know you're busy, hon. Little Bird told me all about your temporary mail job already. News goes around pretty quickly around here. So, coffee? Something stronger? I warn you, I will not take no for an answer. It's like I'm 17 again, Maureen. In that case, you're welcome, honey. Two coffee, coming right up. And one piece of blueberry pie, if I remember correctly. You had one almost every afternoon after school at one point. Oh, you know me too well, Maureen. Always have, always will. Ashley, one blueberry pie. And Ashley, uh, could you keep an eye on the bar for me for a bit? I'm gonna take my break now. You're a real trooper. Ashley? Oh, sweet Mary, what are you doing? Uh, is everything okay, hon? Oh, Lord have mercy. Maybe you should check that out. Honestly! First the roof and now this? Ugh, that poor kid is like a disaster magnet. I'm sorry, Meredith. Looks like I've got my hands full for a bit. Next time, I want to hear everything, you hear? Uh, don't be a stranger now.
I'm actually enjoying this. Ah, the mighty Ambrose River. Hello there, big cuddly guy. Oh, look, Genevieve, a new mailman. Hello there. What's your name then? My name is Jenkins, right? I'm Meredith. Meredith Weiss? Weiss, of course! You're Emily's girl, aren't you? This is Meryl Weiss, Genevieve. She used to live in town years and years ago. It's Meredith. Wouldn't want the cat to get it wrong. Oh! Pardon me, then. You do remember me, don't you? How could I forget Miss Mildred Jenkins? And her cats, of course. Seems like they've multiplied. Yes, I do like cats. Is that such a crime? So what if I have slightly more of them than I used to? Like Genevieve here? And Thomas, and Oliver. Anyway, did you have a package for me then? Yes, here you go. Ah, thank you, dear. Looks like another gift from my son. Still doing everything to get into my good graces, except actually drop by. I'm sure he means well. He's probably just busy. Hmm. That's what he says. That's probably what you say to poor Emily, too. Anyway, I won't keep you any longer. Run along, dear. Give Emily my best. Goodbye, Miss Jenkins. Genevieve. few days. I won't even need that map. It's lighter than I thought. Hi there. I've got some mail for this address. You're not Frank. Luckily, I don't think a mustache would suit me. Haha, <laughs> real funny. But that doesn't explain why Frank gave you the keys for the goose. The goose? Yes, your white and bobbly van, duh. I'm Lori. I'm Providence Oaks mechanic. And I'm the one who keeps the goose running. Well, Thomas is my father. Does that count? Thomas! Yes, that surely counts. 
My father has been teaching me since the day I was born. There is no one better in P.O. than me. And I have to get back to work now. But I suppose you may drive the goose. On one condition. If there's ever anything wrong with it, you bring it back to me, yes? All right. All right, I promise. Good. Perfect. Uh, did Frank tell you about the radio? No. It currently only receives the local station. Plus, sometimes it cuts out altogether. If that happens, just give it a big old bang on the dashboard and that should fix it right up. I'm working on it, I promise. Okay. Thanks, Lori. No problem, Miss W. Bear Creek again. Oh, right, Bear Creek near the old lumber yard. There's a new face. Yes, indeed. As of today, I'll be delivering the mail. Great. I'm Robert. Nice to meet you. Likewise. I'm Meredith. And here's your mail. Thanks. I'd better open this right away. Oh, what the... I'll leave you to it. Have a nice day. Uh, yeah. Thanks, and sorry. It's not your fault this is full of bullcrap.
Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's Mom. How are you? How's the job? Hi, Mom. I'm doing great. It's so relaxing to be outside and drive around. Oh, that's great to hear. Dad says it's strange not having to drive the truck anymore. Must be strange for you as well. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm reading lots of books in the sun. I also went on a beach walk and I saw baby turtles hatch. Oh, I'm almost out of coins. I'm calling from a bar and Dad's ordering a margarita again. <laughs> Talk soon. The Countess and the Carpenter? <laughs> really, Mom? Oh, well, let's give it a read. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 1. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Schultenbrow. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed, right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstaben estate. She tumbled upside down, hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? Oaks, we're starting the day as we always do with a PO positive or pet B, followed by the weather. PO positive or pet P. Dale, what's it gonna be? It's a positive all the way, Jack. I went to Moe's Diner yesterday, and I don't think I've ever had blueberry pie that tasted so good. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you much, Dale. That makes me want to get a piece right now. Same handwriting as the one I delivered next door. I'm guessing... party invitations? Welcome to the Flick Shack. How can I help you? Got a package for you, ma'am. Hold on. You're our new postal worker? Talk about not looking the part. <laughs> I could say the same thing about you. You could, but you'd be wrong. I look exactly like I own a video rental place. If you were looking to cast a movie and needed someone to play the owner of a video rental place, you'd attach a picture of me to the call sheet. <laughs> True enough. I'm Meredith, by the way. Meredith Weiss. Angie, Eastman. So, what brings you to Providence Oaks? Um, grew up here, and now I'm back to do my dad a favor. Ah, I myself have been here for six years. 
And what brings you here? Didn't grow up here. Came to do myself a favor. <laughs> Touche, Mrs. Eastman. Miss. So your dream was to rent out videotapes? Not a dream, per se. More like a vision. <laughs> Figured in a sleepy town like this, people don't have much to do anyways. Might as well watch a flick, right? Well, other than enjoy the scenery. Scenery schmeery. Why stare at a boring lake when you can go to outer space and watch the Death Star get blown up? Hmm, maybe I should watch more movies. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Eastman. But call me Angie. And here, someone just returned this, and it should be right up your alley. The postman always rings twice? <laughs> My kind of humor. Well, I don't know anything else about you, Mrs. Temporary Postal Worker. <laughs> Miss. But touche, Angie. All right. I'll check it out if I have the time. Take your time. This isn't exactly the most popular flick in the shack. And there's plenty of choice, regardless. Okay. Well, it was nice meeting you, Miss Angie. Same here, Miss Meredith. Interesting. Commander Grace, we have established communication with ground control. How do you wish to proceed? Tell them we landed the rocket! Ground control, we have landed the rocket! We will now begin our experiments! Um, package for the Evans family? Just a minute! Commander Grace, permission to explore? Permission granted! Yep, we're the Evans family. Could I just take that real quick? I'm kind of in the middle of a lunar landing. Sure. Here you go. <laughs> nice helmet, by the way. Why, thank you. I actually modeled it on the Apollo 11 crew outfit. Wait. What? Meredith? Guilty as charged. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Who are you? What? For real? You don't recognize your old best friend when you see her? Wait a minute. Kay? Great. And now I busted my colander. I knew opening the door in this thing was a bad idea. Wow, I didn't expect to see you here. That makes two of us. Got me there. You've lived in Providence Oaks all this time? Don't sound so surprised. But yes, I married Barry. Evans, I'm sure you remember our high school star quarterback. Mom! Be right there, Commander Grace! Scanning for alien life forms. That's my little scientist back there. She's crazy about space travel, as you may have guessed, even after the whole Challenger thing. Sounds like you're doing great. I'm happy for you. Well, obviously a lot can happen in 22 years. 
So. Time flies. So, I heard you were back in town for a while. From Maureen. That's right. I ran into her yesterday at the diner. Your Uncle Stan wasn't there, unfortunately. I must have just missed him. Nope. It's Moe's diner now. Like I said, a lot of things happened while you were away. Also, I work there now. At the diner. That's great. Maybe I'll drop by sometime. Yeah, we'll see. Ready for a liftoff! Listen, I'm sorry, but I don't really have time for this right now. Can't get stuck on the moon on my own, and I have to get ready for work. See you around, Em. <laughs> Good to see you, Kay. Evans! <laughs> Commander Grace, hold up! You'll never guess what I just found. You can say that again. Mom and Dad have new neighbors. Siegler, huh? Don't think they ever mentioned them. So glad you could come by. Oh, it's quite the emergency. What's wrong, Miss Jenkins? It's poor little Mortimer. <coughs> He's fallen ill, I think. One minute he was full of life. The next he, well, he just wasn't. <coughs> I mean, I'm not a vet, but he looks fine to me. Well, fact is, you're not a vet, are you, Dee? You know who knows about animals, though? It's Mr. Mackey. He runs the old bait shop by the lake. Could you take Mortimer to him? Sure, I'll get right on it. Here, little kitty, come on. Wonderful! Be nice to Meredith, Mortimer. Don't shed too much hair in her van now. Bye, Miss Jenkins. Bye, Meredith. See you soon, Mortimer.
Mr. Mackey, I know you're close, but... What? I'm Meredith Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Meredith Weiss. Thomas kid. I remember you running around the lake when you were yay high, getting into all sorts of trouble. What can I do you for? Mildred Jenkins tells me you know a lot about animals, and, well... Oh, hi there, little fellow. What's your name? Apparently it's Mortimer. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mort. Hmm, he's a little sluggish. Has Millie been feeding him cupcakes again? To be honest, I have no idea. <sighs> Leave him with me, I'll put him on a diet today. Maybe even catch him a fish if they're biting. With any luck, he should be up and running in the morning. Thank you, sir. By the way, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. You go back to running around that lake, Miss Weiss. Okay. Bye, Mr. Mackey. Bye, Mortimer. Used to think our Spanner Dam was just as big and famous as Hoover Dam. Then I visited Hoover Dam. Hello, sir. Parcel for you. Um, I hope I'm not disturbing, but here's a parcel for you. One minute, I'm busy. Okay, sir. Is that a parcel for me? Yes, sir. Oregon Trail Motel. You can just put it on the counter. All right. Have a nice day.
Meredith, hi. Oh, hi, Steve. How are you? Busy as two peas. Added 87 is really getting there. Hey, listen, you've got plenty of time, right? Yeah, there's not much to do around here. Awesome, I need a favor. I sent a bunch of files your way. It's the retail pitch for Added 87. It's good, but not great. It needs your magic. Do you think you can add it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Steve. When will the files arrive, and when do you need the feedback? Ah, oh, well, it should arrive tomorrow, and I need it yesterday. I could just send it to your post office, right? Yep, can't miss. Awesome. Mail back to me as soon as possible. Priority mail. Thanks so much. Oh, I gotta run. Okay, Steve. Oh, one final thing. Now let this marinate. <clears throat> add it, 87. Add anything you like. It's fancy, right? Yeah, don't, don't tell me now. Uh, I got a jet. Bye. <sighs> All right. Well, let's watch this. Oh, Steve's parcel. And a note from Tess. Hey, Em. Hope you're doing well. Steve told me you'd want to read through this monstrosity. Not sure if you really said that, but have a great... Good morning, P.O. It's time... Today. The floor is yours, Angie. Good morning, Jack. I've got a pet peeve. Returned videos that have not been rewinded. I mean, really? Be kind and rewind. Thanks. Duly noted, Angie. And now on to today's weather. We can enjoy the sun in the morning, but the clouds will cover it more and more. Ooh, interesting. I remember this place.
The watchtower. Ugh, my old stomping ground. There's a face I remember. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Hey there. More paperwork with my name on it? Well, take a look for yourself. Thanks. Oh, it gets worse every day. Sorry to hear that. Can you believe it? I've been taking care of this lakeside for years. And now they're gonna bulldoze it and build apartments. Sounds like a great place to live, though. That view. If you want a nice view, take a picture. Sorry. You really are angry. You can't do a thing about the apartments? They say you can file an official objection, but I'm not a great match with bureaucracy. I'd rather get the chainsaw and cut down Town Hall. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy now. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a nice thought, though. Well... Maybe I can help out. I'm better with paper than chainsaws. Would you? Awesome. I'll think about it. Have a great day. Good day, Mr. Harris. Hey, wait up. I'm done thinking about it. Maybe you'd want to go through all the files... together? Tomorrow afternoon? At Moe's? Food and drinks on me. Mmm, sure. Who can say no to food and drinks at Moe's? Awesome. I'll see you there then. I'll bring all the paperwork. Okay. Bye.
Hi, Maureen. Hi, hon. How are you doing this fine day? I'm fine, but how are you? You know, with the kitchen exploding? Oh, that? <laughs> Nothing a fresh lick of paint and a mop couldn't fix. Doesn't mean to scare you. <laughs> Let's pick up where we left off, shall we? And one piece of blueberry pie. Ashley, one blueberry pie. Meredith Wise, back in Providence Oaks. <gasps> How's life treating you, darling? It's all right, actually. I delivered a package to Kay at her house earlier. Yeah, she told me. How did that go for you? I think it went okay. I can imagine it can be a lot to take in for the both of you, especially after being away for so long. Then again, there are some things that never change, right? You being one of them. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. But I bet the diner looks a bit strange to you, doesn't it? I like what you did with the place. Yeah, I decided it was time for a change. Didn't feel the same after my stand died. World keeps turning. Gotta keep moving along with it, right? Oh my gosh, Maureen. Stan died? I'm so sorry. I, I had no idea. Thank you, darling. But it's really okay. It's been ten years already. Ten and a half, almost. Oh, boy, did I love that man. Oh, we'd been married for so long. It hit me like a brick. But after a while, I decided that sadness wasn't the only emotion I was allowed to have. That's not what Stan would have wanted either. That's really inspiring. Thank you, hon. I do appreciate that. Anyway, you have to get back up. So I did. For me, but also for Kay. <sighs> she took her uncle's death pretty hard. I wish I'd known. Sorry for dumping all that on you like that, darling. Gosh, look at your face. I'm a bit surprised you didn't know. Didn't your parents tell you about it? Or Kay? They might have. I've been so involved in work. Oh, uh, it's okay, hon. I honestly don't give a hoot about any blame game. We all have our lives to live, but Kay's been through a lot. Oh, nursed her uncle through his illness, helping me out. I think seeing you again shook her up a little, is all. She must have missed you during those days. I can imagine. It was good to see her again. I've missed her too. Then, it sounds like you know what to do. Listen, Meredith. Time marches on. And eventually... You realize it's marching across your face. Life's too short. That's exactly why I decided this place could do with a repurpose after Stan passed. Fresh start. It's been Moe's Diner ever since. And believe it or not, business is better than ever. That's great to hear, Maureen. Congratulations. Why, thank you kindly. And listen, you check in with me and Kay again soon, you hear? Don't forget about what's important in life. Hand on my heart, I will return as soon as I have a delivery. Or sooner. Huh? I'll hold you to that. You bet. Bye, Maureen.
Hi there, Mr. Mackey. How's Mortimer? Oh, good day, Meredith. Mort's fine, as I expected. It was just a little indigestion. A good night's rest and a bit of lake trout in the morning has done the little critter a world of good. Excellent. Miss Jenkins will be pleased. Let me take him off your hands. All right. Bye, Mort. Anything else, Miss Weiss? Enjoying yourself so far? I'm having fun, yes. Well, that's good. I'm guessing I'll see you around a lot more, Miss Weiss. For sure, Mr. Mackey. Have a nice day. Look who's back! Mortimer! Oh, look at you! You're good as new! <coughs> yeah, Mr. Mackey did say not to feed him cupcakes. Hmm, I suppose he's right. It's, it's just that he likes them so much. Don't you, Mortimer? <coughs> anyway, thank you so much, Meredith. My pleasure. See you, Miss Jenkins. Call me Mildred, dear. Say goodbye to Meredith Mortimer.
answer. Hope nobody comes and steals this. Hello again. More mail for me? And the tape you gave me. Oh, wow. You watched it already? A drifter in a sleepy town, an affair, and a plot to kill a husband? There's a lot more to this movie than I expected. It's a classic, and probably my favorite noir. They did a remake a couple years back, but it's, well... It's not as good. You can't beat Lana Turner's smoldering intensity. Yeah, she's great in it. I'm so glad you liked it. Most of the people here don't really appreciate the art of classic cinema. They just want to see Police Academy again. You're selling them short. Maybe. Just wish I wasn't the only movie buff around. You seem to enjoy being the expert, though. Are you saying I feel superior to these rubes? Because... <laughs> I guess I do a little. You know, it's good to see you. Any particular reason? Because... I have a sneaky little plan. Oh, we're whispering now? I want you to meet me, say... At at five today. What? Like a date? <laughs> well, more like a business proposal. You in? All right. I'm in. Hurrah! I'll see you this afternoon. Wait, where are we meeting up? Your place. It's 102 New Street, right? Yes. How did you find that out? Looked up your last name in the Rolodex. Your parents are regular clients. Oh, well. It's settled then. See you at five, partner. That's the last of them.
No, Angie Eastman, you can't really create a woman with a computer. What movie is that? It's called Weird Science. You really haven't heard of it? It was a pretty big hit. I figured you, with your computer background... All right, I'll add it to the huge mental list I've been compiling ever since we started talking. So that's Weird Science, Life of Python... <laughs> Brian, Brian, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't really look the part of a computer nerd either. I'll take that as a compliment. Thanks. Well, I do kind of have a thing for nerds. But I'm also a sucker for someone in uniform. So I guess you tick multiple boxes. <laughs> so, any particular reason you're not at the nerd factory anymore? Let's just say I needed a change of scenery. Okay, well... I totally get wanting something different, anyway. I used to live in Los Angeles. Oh, really? Then, yeah. Providence Oaks is pretty different. <laughs> sure is. It's quieter, for one thing. Slower, for another. So tell me about this plan of yours. Is the suitcase part of it? Oh, right. It's simple. I want you to distribute movies all over Providence Oaks. You mean, for free? Yeah. You know the town, you're starting to know the people. Not all of them have VCRs yet, but that's why God invented movie boxes. And by God, I mean electronics companies. Look, it's a VCR in a box, and it's portable too, so you can take it to anyone. Wow, this is the future of entertainment. I've made a list of potential customers and the movies I think they'll like. All you have to do is just deliver the movie box with a movie of their choice. Then you go and pick it back up once they've watched it. Okay, but what's the revenue model here? Oh, you! Not everything is about money. It's about promoting the store. Which, I guess, is ultimately about money. Here, I'll give you these two to start. These are for Lori. You know her, right? Yes, I've met her during my rounds before. Yes, good. I have these two for her. The Love Bug and A Nightmare on Elm Street. This one is about murders in a bathtub, right? Well, not exactly. You'll just have to watch it. But not before Lori gets a chance. I think she'll love it. After Lori gives back the box, I have a couple movies planned for Burt Mackey. They are Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. And that's it for now. If you're in, that is. So, you in? All right. These addresses seem to be on my route anyway. I'm in. All right. Thanks a bunch, babe. Now, do you have any more of this great coffee? Actually, I really need to head back. Oh, what's the rush? I left the store unattended. Better get back. I understand. Talk to you soon? Absolutely. Bye, babe. Hello? Hey, Meredith. Hey, Dad! How's life? I heard something about poker, fishing, and margaritas. <laughs> Talk to Mom, huh? But yeah, can't complain. How about you? Do you like my job? I'm starting to love it. Being on the road, the freedom, the people. That's great to hear. Frank's quite the character, huh? Frank's quite the character indeed. He said you helped him out once. Uh, more than once. Well, what can I say? He likes baseball a bit too much. 
He places a bet every now and then. Nothing too serious. And what about Mildred Jenkins? Mildred likes to talk a lot. I sometimes postpone delivering her mail until she and her cats can't ambush me. Speaking of ambushes, your mom is telling me to hurry up. We're going to a movie. Okay, Dad, don't keep her waiting. What movie? Uh, Stand By Me. Uh, about four Oregon boys in the 50s. Right up my alley. Sounds good. Say hi to Mom for me. Will do. Bye, Meredith. All right, here we go. Shine, P.O. The time has come for a P.O. Positive for that P. Today's contribution is from Mildred, the senior authority on pets and thieves. It's a positive this time, Jack. My cat Mortimer was feeling ill, but thanks to Bert Mackey and our new mailman, Meryl, he's in great condition again. Interesting.
left the package in the truck. W, you got some mail for me today? No, but I have something else. Angie from the Flick Shack asked me to deliver some movie boxes. She also asked me to deliver some to you. Oh, tight. What are the options? Let me see. The Love Bug or A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, that last one might be too scary. <laughs> too scary. I'm almost 16, Miss W. I can take a horror movie. If you say so, Lori. I wouldn't want you to get any actual nightmares. I promise I won't get any nightmares. So you'll pick a nightmare on Elm Street? Give me the love bug. Scary movie too scary after all? No, of course not. But if my parents catch me watching Elm Street, they'll drown me for a week. I wish they'd just take a chill pill and see that I'm basically an adult. I fix cars. Oh, no, that's too bad, Lori. Maybe you can watch it at a friend's house instead. No, I'm homeschooled. There aren't many teenagers here, as you may have noticed. So I don't really have any friends to watch it with. So it's a love bug for me. Tell you what. Take the love bug now, and we'll watch the horror movie at my place. Would Sunday work for you? What? Really? Yes, it would. That'd be wicked, Miss W. Of course. I'm always in for a good fright. So, see you Sunday? Totally. Thanks so much. Deal. Have a nice day. Hello, sir. I reckon that's a parcel with my name on it. If your name is Jack Reynolds? Indeed. Indeed I am. And I reckon you're the new postal worker? Indeed I am. Well, thank you much. New around here, I reckon. People call me JR. I'm a farmer and DJ. I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you. I think I've heard you on the radio. You did, eh? Well, it's what I like to do. I had some spare time and a room in the shed, so I figured, why not? About your playlist. It's really nice. Thanks, but I really need to add more songs. But I'm in the middle of a potato harvest. Don't have much time. Hey, listen, postal worker Meredith, I need to get back to work. Can you do me a favor and give this envelope to Frank? Sure, no problem. Thank you so much.
Hi, Kay. Delivery for the diner. Hey, Meredith. Sure. Just, uh, put it on the counter, would you? Kay, about the other day... What about it? How did things end up with the moon landing? Actually, I got stuck on the moon. But then I took a really big jump for the rocket and got back on board just in time. Grace voiced a few objections regarding the scientific accuracy of that move, but hey. <laughs> Grace sounds like a great kid. Yep. So... I talked to Maureen. Let me guess. You got a piece of Maureen's wisdom too, eh? Why doesn't that surprise me? That explains why she wanted me to take over today's shift, then. She told me about Uncle Stan. I'm so sorry. Thanks. It was a long time ago, but I appreciate it. It's not the same without him. <sighs> so much has happened. I get it. There's always a reason for things to go the way they do. Even so, it never seems to be the right reason. Time marches on. What did Maureen always say about that again? One day you realize... It's, it's marching, marching across, across your across face! Your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mo. Some things never change. Didn't she steal that line from somewhere anyway? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Em. It was good. To talk, I mean. You know. Yeah, it was. I have to get back to it, but see you around, maybe? I'm sure. See ya. Here's the mail, ma'am. Ugh, one of those yellow parcels. Isn't yellow the color of fun and happiness? It's for that thing behind the door, a photography mini lab. They installed it last week and they want me to operate it. As if I don't have enough on my plate already. That's pretty nice, actually. I love photography. Some people think they can become professional photographers overnight. Well, photography can be just for fun too, right? Look, if you want to take photographs, knock yourself out. They want me to practice with the mini lab before the service is officially offered. They sent me a practice kit with the camera and film. Really? I'd love to take pictures. The surroundings here are wonderful. Well, here you go and good luck. Take some pictures and then return it to me. Have a nice day, ma'am.
Hi there. Sorry, pardon? Hi there. Oh, hello. Any luck finding something? Yeah, I've, I've found a couple of things. A uh, nail, penny, a soda can, empty soda can. Ooh, a penny. From what year? Uh, the penny I found is from 1983, so that's worth about one penny. Just 99 more and you'll have a whole dollar. Oh yes, metal detecting is a surefire way to become a millionaire. Whoops, did I just reveal the world's best kept secret? <laughs> no worries, it's safe with me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to get back to it now. I need to be at our MDC later. A metal detectorist club. Nice. A metal detecting club. We compare finds, we discuss the hobby. Sometimes our club president gives a talk on things like buttons. Buttons. Mmm. Could be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice meeting you. It was nice to meet you too. Good luck. Well now, Meredith and Robert. Welcome to Moe's. Table for two? Hi, Maureen. Yes, please. A quiet one if possible. We've got work to do. Is that what they're calling it now? Speaking of work, Robert, someone reckon they could fix the roof themselves and, uh, <clears throat> made it worse somehow. I mean, foot just went right through. No physical harm, thankfully. The roof! Yes, I promise to take a look at it. Uh, let me check out the damage real quick. Be right back. Thanks, darling. Hmm, sure is one of the good ones right there. He seems very nice, but I haven't actually talked to him longer than ten minutes. What's time got to do with anything? You know what you want when you see it, hon. Ha <laughs> ha, Maureen. Speak for yourself. <laughs> well, I guess there might be a bit of projection involved. Well, who can blame me, right? <laughs> anyway, let me show you to my nicest table. I hear the sun hits your face in all the right places here. Okay, so what you're saying is, there's a couple of things we can do, but no chainsaws. Definitely no chainsaws, for the moment. It's just that the remaining options will take time, effort, and patience. Well, that's one out of three for me. Can I get you lovebirds? Anything else? Maureen, really. I could always decide not to fix your roof today, you know. Don't worry, Robert. I know Maureen. I'm sure she doesn't mean anything by it. <laughs> A coffee refill would be nice. Thanks, Maureen. 
Gotcha, hun. Robert? The same for me, please. Sure thing. Back in a jiff. Ashley, is that coffee machine still running? They what? Glad we're finally done for today. But there's more to come. I'm sure you'll do fine. Thanks, but you don't sound very convincing. You'll be fine. When the going gets tough. The tough get going. I love that song. Okay, you two hard-working individuals. Here you go. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, more coffee. How could anyone survive without it? So, how's life in P.O. so far? It's only been a week, but... So far, so good. Yeah, I've been here a bit longer. Time sure does fly. I'm sure you must have some good stories. Yeah, uh, look, Meredith, I'm sorry. I really better get started on fixing that roof. It's just, uh, that's quite a big job. While it's still light out and all. You know. So, thanks so much for your help. I mean, I really do appreciate it. Drive home safe. Um, uh, I'll see you around town. So, yeah, I'll see ya. Everything okay over here? Yeah, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Good day. My name is Walter Morgan. I'm from the Postal Service. I'm calling with regards to compliance to policies and guidelines, such as the use of Postal Service property, code of conduct, and so on. I will be in touch again soon. Meredith, it's Steve. What's up, Steve? Thanks so much for improving the text and sending it back to me. I'm confident this will improve our chances of securing a monster deal. You're welcome, Steve. A monster deal? It's a monster deal. The big retailer, big money, big prizes. Calm down, Steve. And what happens now? <laughs> well, yes, calmness is needed. Eyes on the prize. The next steps are me going to meet up with them this week. Discuss terms. Okay, Steve. Good luck. Thanks, Meredith. Speak soon. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 2. Cecilia hated old Mr. Nabenshoe's table manners. The way he slurped rhubarb into his digestive system was quite the dampener on Cecilia's appetite. She wanted to get out of here and drink and dance with the common folk. Every night, she heard their merry noises travel through her bedroom window. The sounds of real life. Good morning, Meredith. It's an envelope today with an incomplete address on it. It only says Mickey and June, Lake Campground, Providence Oaks. Do you think you can find that? Yeah, I think I know where that is. All right. Have a great day. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Frank, I wanted to ask you something. I will not babysit Mildred's cats. <laughs> no, it's about something else. What's in those envelopes for you? Oh, that's just for stamps. Saves them the hassle of driving up here. Hey, I gotta get back to work. Catch you later.
how about a pet peeve to start the weekend? Or will it be a positive? Tina Banks has the answer. Tia, positive or pet peeve? Jack, I've had the pet peeve for years. We've got a beautiful lake and a nice boulevard, but why don't we have one of those coin-operated binoculars? I'll leave it on the doorstep. Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, uh, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. No problem. Leaking roofs don't fix themselves. Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. I know what you mean. Cool. Thanks. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. There's nothing wrong with a little weirdness. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. A dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? Maybe you need a shrink appointment to answer that. <laughs> yes, but for now, I'll stick to my wood chopping therapy. And not getting new annoying envelopes also helps. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wild card plan. Okay. Good luck with that. Thanks.
I remember Dad telling me, Meredith, the picnic area is for the older kids. I think I was 17 when I had my first actual picnic here. Hello there. Hey, how are you? I may have mail for you. Is it addressed to Mickey or June? Or both? Uh, to both. Here you go. Oh, sweet brother Damien, savior in the hour of darkness. Never mind him. He's a bit stressed out. We were a bit low on paper. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you, too. Woo! Toilet paper? Probably a bit of cash and some rolling paper. Ah, that kind of paper. <laughs> no harm in that. Amen, sister. Thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. Nice RV, by the way. Is it yours? Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. We borrowed it. Joan! Can you get in here, please? Now? Oh, that's my cue. It was nice meeting you, sweet Meredith. Can you, like, not tell the authorities your whole life story? on earth did these folks order? Nope. No answer.
Sorry? Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. You don't have to hide it from me, Lori. You can say you loved it. I guess it wasn't bad. It was really fun, actually. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. See you Sunday. Here's your mail. Left the package in the truck. Hi, Angie. Oh, hey. So, hey, I dropped off and picked up those movies. Right, right. She seemed positive. I think this might actually work. Hmm, well, it better. It will. I'm sure it will. I'm sorry, it's just that business is slow and... Well, I don't really want to talk about it. Could you just pick up the two new movies and deliver them, please? Hmm. Jaws and The Dirty Dozen. I'm on it. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it. Mm-hmm. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye.
Oh, hello. How's the photography coming along? My photography quest has been completed. Here's your equipment back. Okay, then. Let me see if I can manage to develop them. Come back tomorrow for the results. Thank you. See you tomorrow. I didn't bring the package. Mr. Mackey, I've got this movie box for you. Leave it on the porch of the cabin, could ya? I need to know if you prefer a war movie or a shark movie. Huh? Movies? Uh, just pick something. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right. Jaws it is. Have a nice day. It's me, Kay. <laughs> wow, I just like instantly dialed your parents' number. Superpowers! <laughs> Probably just muscle memory or something like that, right? Or maybe it's like that thing where you smell something and it instantly triggers this mega old memory you didn't even know you had. Know what I mean? Oh man, I had that once when Barry bought me lilacs and the smell instantly mentally teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree. And I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that, right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go, must dial M, and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man. Anyway, I uh, didn't call about that, obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or be square. <laughs> The Countess and the Carpenter, Chapter 3.
Come in, were the most regretted words Cecilia had uttered in a long time. They were instantly followed up by, Get out! when she saw the surprised face of the carpenter's apprentice, instead of her niece, Anna. Apparently, her hosts wasted no time in addressing the problem of a malfunctioning bathroom faucet. Should I just come up? Come on up! You just have to watch your step on the third leg. Should be good. I completely got what you just said, and I'm coming up. It's that third step, right? I'm surprised no one's fixed it in all these years. <laughs> so glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here? <sighs> Brings back memories, doesn't it? Any memory in particular you're thinking of? Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh, yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan and they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. Hold up. I seem to remember it was closer to where you were standing. Like exactly where your hands are now. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? Negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. And maybe now it's time for something different. Is it now? Providence Oak's different enough for you? Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? I'm glad we can have these adult conversations now. Oh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? How have you been? I mean, really. Really, really? It's been great, and it's been tough. You know. I guess it's like that for everyone. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing, make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, we got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. 
even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. That sounds exciting! Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music. But I just couldn't let them down, so I stayed. Helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was... actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just... there. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. And what now? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much. Too soon. Too definitive. But I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan. But I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. He basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own, right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's been tough, but looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? <sighs> so, ready to descend to the world below? Yeah... Seems like it's time. Come on, then. Hello? You are speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? I'm sorry, I'm not interested in telemarketing. Meredith, silly, it's me, Steve. Please, tell me to calm down. We are so close to a deal. At it 87, in shops all across America. m m, -m, 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 -m monster deal Calm down, Steve. Okay, okay, I met up with this big retailer, right? They read our great pitch. They loved it, and they want to buy 250,000 copies of Added 87. 250,000. Multiply that by, like, 35 bucks. <sighs> That's a lot. But it's not a done deal yet, right? Not yet, but... Oh, oh, so close. I can almost taste it. Listen. I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please, check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? Gotcha, Steve. Don't worry about it. Awesome. I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing! Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You weren't scared at all? Nope. Told you! Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Move out? Aren't you 15 years old or something? Almost 16 and yeah. 
Don't get me wrong, I love tinkering and I love working in my father's shop, but it's just so boring sometimes. I want to see more of the world. I want to meet more people. I'm sure you've noticed, but there's not many teenagers here in Providence Oaks, and I'm homeschooled, so I don't have many friends to hang out with either. But what do you want to do after school then? I don't know. My parents want me to work in Dad's shop, but I don't think I want that. And you left when you were younger, so I figured maybe you had some advice for me? Oh, well, maybe. I think... Working at your father's shop could be a great opportunity, too. Grow the business, expand to other towns, set up a whole chain of shops. I suppose, but I don't think that's really what I want to do, though. But maybe other villages aren't so boring? Plus, the lake is pretty sweet. And I would miss my parents if I left. And this way, I could stay with them, even after school. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe working in Dad's shop isn't so bad. Imagine all the cars you'll work on. You'll be legendary. Ah, thank you, Meredith. Also, for talking to me and stuff. You're very welcome, Lori. I had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> me too. I should get home soon. Later, Meredith. Later! Ah, oh, Steve's parcel. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really, I must admit the energy here is contagious. Is Adit actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Yes, I remember. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office. I would like to ask you a few questions. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? To be honest, no. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase. It is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Oh. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here. But I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes. Sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Yes. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? Yes. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? Yes. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. You're welcome. Complaints in Monday mornings, the perfect combo. Theo, positive for that key. Take it away, Bert. I managed to get the machine to work. Here are the pictures.
Thank you. I'm happy with how they turned out. Apparently, they're running a photography competition to promote the new photo labs. If you're interested in entering, you can pick out one of your pictures. Oh, that sounds like fun. I'd like to participate. Well, just pick one and submit it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up if I were you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Put it in this envelope and write your name and address on the back. Here's your mail. These look like bills. First, did these folks order? Nope, no answer. Hi there, Meredith. I suppose you've come to pick up that VCR thing you dropped off earlier. The movie box? Yes. Did you watch it? Yeah, I did, I did. It took some figuring out how to hook it up to my old TV set, but I got it to work. Good watch. Shark looked a bit fake, though. I saw it in the theater at the time. Pretty exciting. 
So anyway, Angie over at the Flick Shack hopes this entices you to visit. Yeah, I thought so. Maybe I'll drop in one day. Well, you gotta get it back to work. Hey, here's the package. Thanks. See you around. Sweet Meredith. Hi there. Here's the mail. Thanks. On your own today? Sorta. Mickey's in the RV. He hardly slept last night. Said he had hallucinations of rotten fish in the RV. Did he have too much of the stuff that makes you feel funny? Well, actually, when I went outside this morning, there was this huge rotting lake trout right below our window. Totally grossed me out. How does something like that end up there? Ew, disgusting. I may have... Oh, hold on. Mickey's got to read this. <laughs> Mickey! Wake up, honey! Leave me alone. I'm still shit-faced. It's a letter from Damien. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Give me that. Looks like we won't be here much longer. Oh, really? Where are you going? We're going to Canada. We will be picked up this Thursday, early in the morning. What about the RV? Joan? Are you running your mouth again? I'm sorry, sweet Meredith. Gotta go. Hey, you know what? You should come by Wednesday. Our last night here. We'll build a campfire, have a drink, maybe a puff or two, you know. And talk about the meaning of life, of course. The complete outdoors experience. Oh, cool. Yeah, why not? Joan! Awesome! Gotta run. See you Wednesday after sundown. on earth did these folks order? Hello, sir? It's the mail. Excuse me, what's this all about? Hmm? 
It's all about the mail. I'd appreciate it if parcels are not just dumped on the counter. Okay, I'll take that into account for next time. You'd understand if you had any idea about what I'm trying to do here. Setting up a computer system to handle all the bookings is quite sophisticated. Oh, interesting. I work in computers too. Delivering computers does not mean that you work in computers. No, this is just my temporary job. Yeah, this is temporary for me too. Excuse me, but I have to get this done. Hey, here's your movie box back. Oh, thanks so much, babe. Listen, I owe you an apology. Apology? For what? I was Kurt. Just plain Kurt. And here you are delivering movies for me. You deserve better. It's okay. No one can be perked up all the time. So... Any idea what caused it? Business is slow. More than slow. I mean, the Flick Shack is in real trouble. That movie box kind of was my last-ditch marketing effort. Nothing's worked so far. I'm sure it'll be fine. Chin up. Anyway, enough whining. Let me make up for my stupid behavior and reward you for your diligent movie fairying, my lady. Reward me? Yep. I've got... Ta-da! Coupons! They're one of the few perks this job has. I get to take myself and a plus one to a free movie of my choice at the new cinema in Astoria. Valid tonight only.
Thanks, but wouldn't you rather take someone else? Someone a bit more movie savvy? Well, you're in luck. I don't really know anyone else. So what'll it be, Missy? You in or you out? <laughs> I'd love to. I'm in. Great. Pick you up at your place at eight. I know where you live. <laughs> anyway, gotta get back to it. Bye. Bye. Hello? Hey, Meredith. How was your day at the office? Uh, I mean, mail truck. Oh, hey, Dad. Actually, it did start at the office. I was being interrogated. Interrogated? What? By whom? Walter Morgan, a higher up from the Post Service. He started asking questions about code of conduct. And about Frank. Oh, Morgan, that walking corpse. He's always after Frank. What did you say? To be honest, I told him that Frank had some suspicious things going on. Ah, oh, okay. Don't worry. It's on Frank anyways. But he'll find a way to get out of it. He always does. Listen, Mom's poking me. I guess we're not allowed to talk about work. Uh, here she comes. Bye, Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Was Dad trying to get work stories out of you? Hi, Mom. Yep, he tried. And he succeeded. It was a weird day. Well, I'm changing the subject right now. Have you met the new guy at the hotel yet, Matt? Yeah, I met him the other day. He's, uh, a unique character. Unique? <laughs> I guess that's one way to put it. He's one of the reasons why I won't miss working at the hotel. Anyway, how's life in good old P.O.? It's nice. I met some interesting people. That's good to hear. Interesting people. Do you mean interesting, interesting, or just interesting? I mean just interesting. What do you mean? You know what I mean. It's been a while since you've met someone interesting. That's right. And now I'm changing the subject. How are you guys doing over there? Oh, Florida is fantastic. I think I might actually want to live here. The warmth of the sun, it's very easy to get used to. Oh, Dad is telling me to get back. Looks like the bar's open. Wonder what he's ordering this time. I'll get an Alabama Slammer. <laughs> Alabama what? Alabama Slammers! Cheers! This is fun! It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? You pick. You're the expert. That's exactly why I want you to choose. The choice of innocent eyes. All right. Let's see. Big Trouble in Little China, Blue Velvet, or The Great Mouse Detective. At least give me some guidance, though, like... 
What's Blue Velvet about? Apparently it's noir, with a surrealist twist. I once saw a film by this director called Eraserhead, which was, well, weird. <laughs> Unsettling, too. From what I've heard, this new one is quite... memorable, as well. What do you know about Big Trouble in Little China? It's supposed to be a pretty good ass-kicking. Most John Carpenter movies are pretty exciting, at least. He's the guy who made Halloween and The Thing. Nothing too deep, but should be entertaining. Heard anything about The Great Mouse Detective? <laughs> Disney movie. Mouse Detective. What do you need? A road map? All right, I'm ready to pick. Blue Velvet. Good choice. This is going to be... interesting. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of speechless. And that's rare for me. It certainly was something. I loved it. And I never want to see it ever again. <laughs> yeah, that about covers it. It's certainly singular. At one point, I did begin to wonder, do you think Providence Oaks has a seedy underbelly? Don't think so. Haven't found any ears lying around during my rounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, give it time. So anyway... My parents' house is right down this road, as you well know. Yeah, let's move! <sighs> I wish I loved anything half as much as you love movies. Next time we'll do something in your area of expertise. What, computer software? Yeah, we can build a killer robot or something. I like the sound of next time, by the way. <laughs> Oops, what a slip of the tongue. So, here we are. Now what? I'm sorry. But I am tired. Ah, are you sure? Yeah, sorry. See you later, okay? Okay. Good night, babe. Meredith, can I bug you for a second? Sure, Frank. What's up? That Walter Morgan guy, uh, what did he want from you? He was asking all sorts of questions. Also about you, Frank. God damn it! Can you believe that jerk? I'm sorry, Frank. I, I just can't lie. I don't blame you, Meredith. They've got nothing on me anyways. I gotta get back to it, Meredith. Have a great day. Oh, before I forget, that Robert Harris guy was here this morning, looking for you. He asked if you could drop by. He's working somewhere in the forest today. Hey, Meredith, I'm up here. Hey, Robert. 
Is it cold up there? What? I can't hear you. Should I come up as well? Sorry, I can't hear you. Maybe I should come down first. Can you hear me now? Hi, Meredith. Loud and clear. Over. Thanks for coming out here. This arborist job came up suddenly. Awesome. I'd love to try that sometime. It's great up there. I used to climb a lot. Still do, actually. But now I get paid for it, too. Anyways, I figure it would also be good for you to see where the apartments are planned. Here? Really? Ugh, what a shame. Fear not. I have masterminded a wild card plan. Tell me all about it. I've scheduled a recording session at a professional sound studio. Get out of here. Are we going to do a tree version of We Are the World? Yes, I can do Bruce. We are the world. We are the children. That needs some work, Robert. I'll be... Bette Midler, and just sing along. Oh, yes. But no. Sorry. It'll be a radio message to get the people of Providence Oaks involved. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, probably better that way. Yeah, leave the singing to the pros. It'll be this afternoon, by the way, at Jack Reynolds' barn. Are you in? I could use an extra set of ears. A professional sound studio, huh? Okay, I'm in. Great. Meet me there after work. I gotta get back up in this tree now. See you later. Bye. Be careful up there. Thanks. We are the ones to make a brighter day. So let's start giving. I'll leave it on the doorstep.
I came. Package for you. I thought I might as well give it to you now instead of, you know, waiting till you're home. Oh, thanks. That's super amazing. Thank you. Um, what is it? Oh my god. I'm so excited about this. Yay! I see. This is a guessing game. All right. Is it a... A new rocket? No, but that would totally make Grace's day, though. I should be able to craft something like that out of the cardboard packaging. Good idea. Okay. The suspense is killing me. Open it! Okay, you ready? It's actually a Yamaha DX7 synthesizer! Oh man, I am super stoked this arrived so soon! I got this amazing deal on it through the classifieds. This old guy was selling it. Apparently he had never really used it. I mean, what? How? Can you imagine owning something like this and not using it every moment you get? I mean, this synth is used everywhere these days, so I was like, yes, this is mine! <laughs> Sorry, I can get carried away about this kind of stuff. I know, you're doing that speeding up thing again. To be honest, you lost me around the time you opened the box. But if it works like a computer, sign me up. Computers, eh? Oh, wait, are you a programmer? Because if you are, you should totally check out the Insonic Mirage. If you like sampling machines, you should totally try out programming. Oh, man, I would love to. So much to do, so little time. Listen, Em, I totally owe you for lugging this around for me. Now, what will you have? It's on the house. Pie! I mean, I'd love some blueberry pie if you have it. Oh, I just sold the last slice. We're clean out. Anything else? I owe you? I owe you it is. Apparently, I have some baking to get started on now. But good to see you. And thanks again. No problem. Have fun with your synthesizer. Yes, thanks! Nope. Wrong parcel. Leave it on the doorstep.
Hey, you. Hi. So I'm guessing you want to rent a movie, huh? <laughs> We've got a great selection. Actually, that's not what I'm here for at all. Wait, you're not telling me you're here for little old me. <laughs> so, what's on your mind, babe? Well, I like you, but I think we should just be friends. I see. I, ca I came on a little too strong. It's been known to happen. I do like you, just not in that way. Gotcha. Friends it is. So anyway, what's on your mind? Seems I caught you in a rare moment of quiet contemplation. <sighs> yeah, uh, I just... You ever get the feeling you're not where you need to be? You feel that way about Providence Oaks? It's just that this whole Flick Shack adventure, I think it was the right idea at the wrong time. And in the wrong place? I think so. Yeah, I think I'm just too different for this town. Plus, business hasn't really been booming. Uh, and here I was hoping our movie box project would turn things around. <laughs> it almost did. Don't think that it didn't help. That's what I mean with the wrong time. I'm sure video will be huge. But it isn't. Not yet. Not here, anyway. So you're leaving? Yeah. Yes, I am. Wow. I didn't realize until just now that I'd already made my mind up. But I guess I have. I'm leaving. Gosh, it feels so liberating to say. <sighs> You're welcome. How about you? Have you made your mind up yet? Uh, about your future, I mean? Me? No, not yet. Well, take your time. I want to give it my full attention when you do decide. And right now, I really have to start organizing the grand closing of the Flick Shack. We hardly knew ye. I hear ya. I'll swing by later.
Hmm. Well, I guess nobody's home. I'll leave it on the doorstep. I'm calling it a day. Okay, folks, it's showtime. Robert, are you ready? Yes, but before we start, I'm not a pro, so please bear with me. You'll do great. Okay, Robert, take it away. <clears throat> Fellow Providence Okians, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Perfect. That's a wrap, folks. Back to work. Hold on. Hold on, Jack. Meredith, what do you think? The text is fine, but I miss a revolutionary vibe. It needs more passion. Um, uh, okay. You might be right. Jack, one more recording, please. Sure, Robert. Here we go in one, two... Three, action! Fellow Providence Okians, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Better? Actually, no. Could you also try Attention Providence Oaks and Lake Lovers Listen Up? So, just the first words. Yeah, Robert, if you could hurry up a bit. Potatoes don't come out of the ground voluntarily. 
One, two, three, action! <clears throat> Attention, Providence Oaks. Lake lovers, listen up. Like that? A star is born. Now, let's do some real work. No, wait. It's not quite there yet. Well, I don't give a hoot. Robert, you said this would only take a minute. You're right, Jack. Sorry, Meredith. This will have to do. Well, okay. It's your precious leg. All right. It's time to really roll up our sleeves. Be ready, Robert? Sure thing, Jack. Meredith, I'm gonna return the favor and help Jack out today. If you lovebirds want to spend more time together, she can come along too. Plenty of work to do. Jack, what the... I better get going. Good luck with those taters. Okay, Meredith. Thanks so much again for helping out. Meredith, it's me. Oh, hi, Steve. I'm sorry. Didn't get the chance to look at the contracts yet. Oh, you didn't? I'll look at them tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, short call. Got a rush. Corporate lawyer appointment. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. You speak soon. go again. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. I need to inform you that your colleague Frank Coleman has been suspended. Okay, sir. Anything else? The only thing you need to know right now is that I will be filling his spot for the time being. Okay, sir. Have a nice day. is from Matt Kearney. I have a positive. Last night's thunderstorm over the lake, what a spectacle. I'm glad my barn's still standing, but thanks for calling in, Matt. Let's see what the weather will bring today. We're starting the day with showers, but the sun might come back in the end. Enjoy the music. What's this? The Flick Shack has closed down and will not reopen. Any unreturned tapes can be dropped off before September 22nd. It has been a privilege to serve as Providence Oaks' premier home cinema provider. Thank you for your patronage. All the best. Your Flick Shack proprietor, Angie. Hmm.
That's lighter than I thought. People love to browse the shop and then not buy anything. Answer.
Mail carrier Meredith. Farmer Jack. Good to see at least someone's working today. As opposed to Frank? As opposed to me. Can't harvest taters with all this rain. But Frank's not twiddling his thumbs, I can tell you that. You spoke to him? Yeah, just talked to him on the phone. He's mad as a wet hen. It's quite entertaining, actually. Thanks for dropping by, mail carrier Meredith. I gotta get back to it. Okay, Jack. Good luck with the weather. Hope it'll clear up. Thank you much. Hi, Maureen. P.O. people, I need to pause the music for a special message. Uh, hush, darling. I want to hear this. And so do you. It's from our own Robert Harris, who wants to keep Providence Oaks pretty. Uh, don't flatter yourself. He's talking about the trees. Take it away, Robert. Dear people of Providence Oaks, I'm Robert Harris, and I oppose the plans for new apartments on Lakeview Drive. If you feel the same, let Town Hall know about it and give them a call. Let's keep Providence Oaks pretty. Isn't that something? It could have been more juicy, I guess. But it does say exactly what he wants it to, which is rare for our Robert. Even though he does have his redeeming qualities, doesn't he just? I wonder how he came up with the idea, though. Well, actually, Robert set it up himself, at Jack's. Did he now? And how would you know about that, huh? Because I was at the studio when he was recording it. I see. Robert wasn't kidding when he said uh, he wants to keep pretty things around in Providence Oaks now, was he? That's not exactly how he put it, and neither should you. Well, that's what I heard. Anyway, I actually wanted to talk to you about something else. What are you doing this Sunday evening, hon? Something tells me I'm about to find out. You know it. Listen here. I'm hosting a very special first time Open mic night this upcoming Sunday. We'll have some drinks, some food, discover the town's hidden talent, or not, if you know what I mean. It'll be a hoot. More like a hoot and a half. Count me in. Good. I already had you down on my list, of course, but it's nice of you to RSVP. That's settled then. I will see you this Sunday at 8 p.m. And tell everyone you meet, okay? Let me see you put those postal delivery muscles to good use. Let's just say I'll do my best. There you go. You're catching up. Now I have to go unpack some deliveries out back. But I will see you soon, darling. And don't forget about the open mic. I couldn't if I wanted to.
Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's me. Thank you for calling Alcoholics Anonymous. How may I help you? Oh, please, Meredith. It's not that bad. You're just jealous. <laughs> Actually, I am. I hope you mean about the weather. Well, it did rain a lot here today. Oh, just wait until the wet season really starts. It never ends. Why haven't you told her yet? Let me talk to her. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Weiss. Meredith, sorry to break it up. Your mom wants to talk to you. Meredith, I'm so excited. Your dad and I found this cottage this weekend near the beach. It's so pretty. Not too big, but who wants to be inside anyway? Uh, me? I like to be inside. I know, honey, but hear me out. We talk to the owner. We can rent it for the time being, spend the winter here. And if we like it, we can buy it and settle down here for good. Awesome! I'm so happy for you. Isn't it something? And uh, it means that our house will be vacant for a while. We won't put it on the market until we've tried out Florida for a few months. So, um, if you want to extend your stay in Providence, oops. Are you serious? I'm pretty serious, yes. But uh, it's a pretty big deal, so just think about it for now. Hmm? Can I talk to her for a sec again? Yeah, here comes your dad again. Bye, dear. I'm going to get us something bubbly. Hey, Meredith, just wanted to say that I'll call again at the end of this week. Have a great one. Okay. Bye, Dad. Memories, memories, memories. Of you. <laughs> that was so deep. Right, Meredith? Wow, well, yeah. Awesome. It's in the darkness when my soul stars align and, and illuminate the real me. Oh, baby, I'm so happy for you. We, we need to celebrate this moment. I'll be right back, ladies. Mickey can be difficult sometimes, but nights like these... I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but with him. How did you two meet? At a dorm party. He was the cool guy who dropped out of college, and I was about to do the same. Is she interrogating you again, June? Oh, Mickey. Be nice to sweet Meredith. <laughs> I'm just kidding now. Uh, sorry for being a hard ass the other day, Meredith. It's just that we need to be a bit cautious. It's okay, Mickey. I've had worse, delivering mail. Delivering mail for the man? I couldn't do that. So, you guys are sticking it to the man, eh? Hell yeah! Can't stand the man. Anything with authority, in whatever shape or form it appears. I think I know what you mean. Feeling like a prisoner of society. Hey, guys, let's not spoil this evening with heavy stuff, okay? Ah, you're so right, Junebug. Who cares about the man when I've got you? There's something that'll make you feel lighter. Much lighter. <coughs> Meredith! No thanks. I'll pass. June? Maybe later, Mickey. Meredith, how about some booze instead? Sure. What do you have? Beer, wine, and whiskey. Whiskey? Why not? 
Gotcha. Be right back. Memories. 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 Of you. And. And me. Memories. Alrighty. Here you go. This is the life. It sure is. It will be even better once we're finally in Canada. I'm sure you'll have more peace in Canada. I hope you guys will be happy there. It's so exciting. Damien will pick us up with his Jeep tomorrow morning. We'll have a cozy hour under the blankets when we cross the border. And then we're good. Hey, I just realized we're abandoning the RV. You should totally have it. Mickey, can Meredith have the RV? What piece of junk? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Really, guys? That's awesome. No problem. We don't really believe in possessions anyway. Whatever you decide, we'll leave it at the gas station. That's where we rendezvous with Damien. Wild. Memories, memories, memories. Of you and me, memories. Top of the Thursday morning, P.O. We don't have any callers today, so I'll bring up one of my own pet peeves. P.O. Positive for that team. The idiotic plans for pedestrianization of Main Street. It's... <sighs> well, don't get me started or I won't even have time for the weather. Speaking of... Interesting.
it's heavier than I thought. All right, I'll leave it on the doorstep. Dear, you're a sight for sore eyes. Oh, hi, Miss J... Mildred? How so? Are you expecting more mail from your son? It's just... this week. It's all a bit much for me. I need to get my hair done for Sunday's special evening, but I can't leave my cats alone. And then all of a sudden, Frank has gone missing. He still needs to bring me an envelope. Please tell me that you have it with you. I'm afraid this is just a postcard. <coughs> Mildred, are you gambling? Oh, don't be a nosy posy, Meredith. Oh dear, oh dear. He can't just have vanished into thin air, can he? Don't worry, I'm sure Frank will show up again. Oh, Frankie boy, always making me worry too much. And I need to cancel the hairdresser's appointment, but what if I can't reschedule? Oh, don't worry about it, your hair looks just fine. No, no, no. My hair looks like a mess. I can't go out and about looking like this. Sure you can, Mildred. I'm sorry, but I have to be on my way again. Oh dear, oh dear. I need to go inside and calm down a bit.
Meredith! Look at this house on wheels! I have no idea where it came from, but it's absolutely rad. It's mine, actually. Mickey and June gave it to me. You know, that young couple down by the lake campground. Whoa, really? That's so tight! Here, they left this note on the driver's seat. Oh, let me read it. Life's a journey and not a destination. Just grab the wheel and enjoy the ride. Love, M and J. So, what are you going to do with it? You have to hit the road. I don't know what I want yet. I was hoping it could stay here for a while. You can tinker on it too. You know I'd love tinkering, but it's going to need a lot of work. It can stay here for as long as you need. Good to hear, Lori. I can already hear the cogs in your head spinning at top speed. What are your plans? Well, if it's going to be here a while, I should give it a name first. Can't have such a beautiful vehicle and not give it a name. How about the Sea Turtle? Big, slow, washed up, just like a turtle. Or the Raccoon, because it's got brown spots and is full of trash. Or the Hermit Shell. It had many owners over the years, just like the shell of a hermit crab. I like the sea turtle. Good choice. I'll get working on it right away. See you later. Bye. Yes, yes, yes. He could only look on in sheer terror as Madeline threw the key straight into the lake. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is good stuff. Important delivery. Oh, for Christ's sakes, go away. If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. You must have me confused with someone else, sir. Oh, bloody heck. Do I sound like I care? You lot are all the same to me. Just go away. How many yokels are there in this backwater town? 
Do they realize people come out to these kinds of places because they're supposed to be remote and quiet? It's not that. It's just that not everyone up here in these parts feels comfortable with us leaving packages on their doorsteps. <sighs> I... I do beg your pardon. I... yes, I am expecting a package. I didn't know you were from the Postal Service, ma'am. Should it even matter who I am? Shouting at random strangers is generally considered rude. All right, all right, I'm sorry. It's just... I've been under a lot of pressure lately from my publisher, as well as my wife. I do appreciate your driving all the way up here, and Lord knows I'll be needing those ribbons. Just please leave them on the porch, and thank you. You're welcome, sir. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Now, where was I? She threw the key in the lake. Then what happens? Oh, Christ's sake, she made me lose my bloody train of thought. No, wait, I got it. And then he says... Good afternoon, Miss Weiss. Good afternoon, Mr. Morgan. I wanted to let you know that today was my last day here. Oh, really? Will Frank be coming back then? That's all I have to say. Good luck. Hello? Hi, Em. It's me, Kay. Oh, hi, Kay. Good. You're home. Listen, I don't know if you're busy tonight, and I wouldn't normally bother you like this, but I'm kind of in a huge pickle at the moment, and now I'm imagining being inside of a huge pickle. Thanks, Brain. You sound a bit agitated. Okay, so this is going to sound like I'm 16, but I have these tickets to a really big concert tonight for Barry and me, and it seems the babysitter has just bailed on me! Alright, so maybe the babysitter part doesn't sound like I'm 16, I hope. <laughs> anyway, it's Journey, so I'm like, I need to go tonight, and I got these tickets ages ago! And it's a long drive to Portland, so we'll probably be out all night, and I promise you I've called everyone and their brother. Besides, they're really good kids to watch tonight. Whoa, 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 whoa. K! Inside voice, K! Inside voice. <laughs> yeah, sorry. You're totally right. I'm blabbering on R and I. Okay, don't freak out. You got this. Alright, recap. Journey tonight in Portland. Got tickets. Sitter bailed. So I guess you figured out by now that I'm awkwardly trying to ask if maybe you could do me a huge favor and watch Grace and Max tonight? Hey, it's fine. Don't worry. I'll babysit tonight. Oh my god, you serious? That would help me out in such a big way! And I would owe you big time. Huge! You would, wouldn't you? Hmm, interesting. Oh dear, never mind. Don't care. Can you be here around 6 p.m., so in like 30 minutes? You don't have to bring anything. There's food, videos, even a cardboard replica of Apollo 11 with a set of matching helmets. You're covered. See you in a bit! All right, see ya! All right. 
Who wants s'mores? Hey, hey, hey! Guess who's back? Frank? I'm so glad to see you again. I'm so happy to be here again. I guess Morgan didn't stick around to welcome me back. Well, I guess I can't blame him. Oh well, he'll never get his way here. What happened the last few days? Well, what can I say? Don't mess with the big boys. I guess they didn't understand that some of my customers do a little more than talking about their cats. Are they criminals? No, no, nothing that bad. Frank Coleman's no stranger to the high-stakes game. I've got lawyers in my inner circle. All it took were a couple of lawsuit threats. But Frank, isn't this all just really wrong? Nah, Meredith. It's just a bit of harmless fun. Okay, Frank, if you say so. All right. Time to get back in the saddle. Have a great day, Meredith. A very good morning, Providence Oaks. Pio, positive <laughs> today actually no nancy the floor is yours yeah jack i've got a pet peeve why do people start fake coughing when i'm smoking in my store if you don't like it just leave thank you much nancy and well if you're asking it's not like people have other places to go besides the smoke house that you call a general store on to the weather forecast sunny in the first half of the day and some clouds in the second. Back to the playlist. Hey, Robert. How are you? I was away for a few days on an urgent job out of state. I'm good. It's nice to see you again. Here's the mail. Thanks, and likewise. Hmm, priority mail from Town Hall. Let's see what they have to say this time. Dear Mr. Harris, on behalf of yada yada yada... Concerning Environmental Management Act 1213, yada yada yada. Uh, wait. What? <laughs> Listen to this. We have decided to postpone the construction of apartments for at least six months. We hope this satisfies you as well as the many residents of Providence Oaks that contacted us with their unfiltered and enthusiastic comments. It worked. The plan worked. Nice. We need to celebrate this. Uh, how about tomorrow night? Steak dinner at Moe's. Or something else. On me. Um, I don't think I can make it, Robert. Oh, well, okay. Uh, have a great weekend. Gotta go now. The telephone troops need to know the assault can be abandoned.
left the package in the truck. the waxworms have arrived. Excuse me? I meant the package, Miss Weiss. It's my worms. For fishing. They're just in time. I'm taking a boat to the island this afternoon. Oh, nice. A boat trip. Hey, you can tag along if you want, like your father used to. But I'm not helping you with any waxworms. I appreciate the invitation, but fishing's not for me. Uh, suit yourself, landlubber. Here's your mail.
Driving along the highway Hello? Friday delivery day. Well, just call me Friday delivery K. Okay, no, that sounded better in my head. Someone's in a good mood today. Yes, thanks for looking after Max and Gracie last night. You were a real trooper for stepping in last minute. Are they okay? Did they mention anything? Max did say I owe him pancake breakfast for the rest of the week, and Grace said she will never sleep again, but yeah, pretty much. What movie did you watch with them anyway? <laughs> so... How was the concert? <laughs> oh yeah, man, Journey is so good! Those songs have been stuck in my head all day! Eh, that sounds great! I know, right? There's just so much cool stuff being created right now, you know? I mean, Journey was cool. I got to know them through Barry at first, but I tell you, if Prince or New Order ever came to Portland, I would sell my spleen for tickets. One spleen, two bands. That's quite the potential dilemma. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned Cyndi Lauper, or Run DMC, or Stevie Wonder. And before you go there, I know you're probably setting up a joke about spleens and ham and organs right now. I would never. All jokes aside, though, I spent half the concert thinking about how I haven't really focused on my own music for a while now. Kids, work, all that stuff. So much going on. And I mean, I love tinkering, but right now, I'm not sure I'm even creating anything cool or just... You know, not even Barry is allowed to listen to my songs at this stage, to be honest. You never know until you put yourself out there. I guess that's true. I was thinking, I have a mixtape with some of my stuff, you know? Just something I've been trying out with my new synthesizer. And you want me to... Listen to it, maybe? And hey, don't tell me what you think yet, yeah? You'll be my secret special audience of one. So I can get used to the idea of an audience. Would this have anything to do with Sunday evening? Okay, don't tell anyone, but I'm thinking of performing a song on my new synth this Sunday. Holy crap, I just said that out loud. Dude, you are coming to the open mic, right? Of course, that's great. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But act cool, yeah? No one else knows yet. See you there. Sure thing. Back to my own journey for now. Haha. <laughs> nope, ignoring that. Bye now. I'm calling it a day. Kay's tape. Let's have a listen.
Hello? Hi, Meredith. Guess what I signed today? The contracts for the Added 87 deal? Oh, yes. You are now talking to Steve Mitchell, CEO of a multi-million dollar enterprise. But before I continue my insufferable bragging, I have a thing or two to say to you, about you. You've been a huge part of the success of this company, and I feel this is just the beginning. We're entering the golden age of personal computers, and we've got front row tickets. The past two weeks have made me realize that I couldn't have done it without you, and I'm going to need you even more in the coming years. So here's a new monster deal I want you to think about. Become a partner in the company for 20% of the shares and a significant pay raise. Sig-ni-fi-kent. The only condition is that I need your commitment for the next five years. So, there it is. Think about it, and let's talk about it more when you're back in the office. Oh! Wow, Steve! That sounds great! Just let it sink in a bit. I don't need an answer right now. I have to get back to my, uh, million-dollar lifestyle. Actually, no, I, I need to get cranking on lots of stuff. Talk soon, Meredith. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 4. No one screws better than the carpenter's apprentice. Old Mr. Nabenshu acted like he was an expert on the topic. What he's done back there is nothing short of astounding. I'd hire him for any job and I'd pay good money for it. I never expected that the fence he repaired would survive last night's storm. A postcard? From Angie? Miss Meredith, I am so, so sorry I haven't been able to see you. It's just that I've been swamped organizing my not-so-timely exit from Providence Oaks. I'm sure you understand. You've probably seen the foreclosure notice. That certainly helped expedite my decision to leave. Anyway, I'll be sure to drop your parents an address when I find a new place to settle down. Hopefully we could grab a coffee at some point. I'd like that. It was really nice getting to know you. I hope you found what you were looking for in Providence Oaks. I know I did. And for me, it wasn't Providence Oaks. Your mileage may vary. All the best, Angie. Saturday, everyone. It's time once again for a Theo Positive Report. Today's verdict is from Cheryl. Hi, Jack. I went for a walk the other day and suddenly encountered a majestic stag. Ah, oh, you're still here, huh? That makes two of us. When are your parents coming back? Do you miss them? What would make you think that? You're so warm-hearted. Everyone probably likes you. Everybody's nice to me, because P.O. would fade away without this door. You may be right about that. A bit of appreciation every now and then would be nice. Well, I better be on my way. Have a nice day.
I'm busy. Aren't we all? No! Damn it! I almost had it. I almost fucking had it. Thanks for breaking my concentration. You're welcome. <sighs> Video games are supposed to be fun. I feel horrible. Absolutely horrible. Maybe you should try a different hobby. You know what? I can beat this damn game. And I'm not quitting until I have. Good luck with that. Okay, fellow Providence Okians, it's time once again for the sent-in letters and announcement. This one's from our very own Maureen, or Mo, as we all know. Hey, folks. Just wanted to grab your ears for a second to let you know all about the upcoming open mic night over at Mo's Diner this Sunday. That's right. Claim your 15 minutes of fame, enjoy some well performances, and the usual good food and drinks for everyone. I expect to see all of y'all for a great evening, and maybe even some dancing. You know who you are. Come join the show at Moe's at 8 p.m. this Sunday. I'll come get you if you don't. Well, you heard her, folks, and I'll be there too, so you better not miss it. Back to the music and to one of my favorite songs. Mail Carrier Meredith. Farmer DJ Jack. Seen any ghost drivers on the way here? Ghost drivers? Yeah, you know, people driving on the wrong side of the road. Nope, haven't seen them. Okay, I was just wondering. Don't bother. I need to get back to the live show. See you tomorrow, I reckon. Bye now. I reckon. Oh, and please close the door. Don't want to broadcast any mail truck noise. Thank you much.
that's lighter than I thought. Alright, I'll leave it on the doorstep. Here's your mail. the last of them. So ends a week full of turmoil. Are you happy it's over? If only the Angels hadn't lost to the White Sox. That would have made it perfect. I guess you can't have it all, Frank. 
playing each other again tonight. Should I change the bet? Sorry, Frank, but I really don't care about sports or gambling. <laughs> Meredith, no problem. I'll stop talking about it. Or I'll try at least. Have a great weekend, Meredith. Oh, wait. This was your last day. I totally forgot to tell you that they still haven't found someone else for the job. So, I guess, you can have it, if you want. Are you serious? Of course. And it's a great job. You know what? Think about it. And Monday morning when you return your stuff. You gotta run now. Red Sox are playing the Yankees. your dad again. How was your time in the mail delivery business? Oh, hi, Dad. Well... I actually really loved it. Awesome. Maybe you should just keep doing it. Worked out well for me. Actually, it seems like they haven't filled the vacancy yet. They haven't? Well, you know what I'd do. Oh, hold on, Meredith. Let me guess. Mom wants to talk to me? Hi, Meredith. Sorry to butt in, but you're thinking about staying at Providence Oaks? Hi, Mom. I'm not sure, to be honest. What are you not sure about, dear? Are other people involved? You know, any interesting, interesting ones, perhaps? No, no, that's not it. It's just easy going here. The surroundings, the job, the people. Maybe you just need a break. Or maybe this really is what you want. But whatever you decide, think long and hard on it. Oh, hold on. I have a suspicion Dad wants to talk to me. Meredith, I just wanted to say, you need to clean the lint filter on the dryer every once in a while. If you never do that, it could burn the house down. No problem, Dad. I'll make sure to do that. Great, thanks. I sometimes suddenly worry about things like that in the middle of the night. And it's not about the dryer, of course. I want you to be safe. And I'm sure you'll be okay. I'll tell the dryer that he's on your mind. <sighs> thanks. And could you also pet him on his back every now and then? He likes that. Oh, running out of coins. Gotta go. Bye, Em. Take care. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 5. Oh, to be outside for once, Cecilia sighed. Babbling brooks, the smell of pine trees, low grunting sounds of deer in the distance, and the quacking of ducks, nature's peaceful splendor, and even the meow of a common house cat with a freshly caught duckling. Wait, a duckling? Let go of it! Come here! Don't run away from me, you little devil! Anyway, I love this town. You know I do. So, I'm dedicating my last jokes to specific people here tonight. The first one's for Maureen. A guy walks into a bar, 
and dozens of slabs of meat are hanging from the ceiling. So we asked the bartender, what's up with the hanging meat up there, man? So the bartender says, ah, you're new here. Well, we like to play a game here. If you can jump up and slap a steak, the house will pay for your drinks all night. However, if you miss, you have to pay everyone else's bar tab. So, want to give it a go? Nah, says the man. <laughs> Those steaks are too high. <laughs> This one's for our own newcomer, Meredith Weiss. So, a woman's driving down the freeway, but all of a sudden, she hears a local news bulletin warning drivers on the very freeway she's on. They're saying, please be advised of this very dangerous situation of a car going the wrong way. So the woman says to herself, what car? <laughs> Why, there's dozens. <laughs> Well, folks, wasn't that special? Now, let me know if any of you have any jokes about Jack, you hear? It's an open mic, after all. <laughs> it's actually time for a little break right now. So come on up to the bar for some of our finest concessions. We'll continue shortly. Mildred, how are you? And how are the cats? Fine, on both counts, dear. Thank you for asking. So, do you like the hair? To be completely honest, it doesn't look all that different. Hmm. To be honest, it feels like a waste anyway, as I can only stay for a few moments. That's too bad. You see, my son decided to drop by, unannounced. And he's staying the whole weekend. Oh, that's wonderful news. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anyway, take care, dear. Now, where did he park the car? Yes, it's me, Matt Kearney, in an egg brace. Real funny, huh? I must admit, it. it's at least a little funny. What happened? Well, I was about to send the final boss to the afterlife, but then the computer crashed. I kicked my foot out in anger and fell from my chair, and now I'm here looking like a loser. I'm sure you'll beat the game one day. Don't give up on the dream. I can't play like this, but I'm going to work out a strategy in the meantime. Dear people, none other than our own Kate. Evans will perform next. She has been writing songs since she was a little girl. And I cannot say how thrilled I am to host her first performance of hopefully many to come. I am so proud of you, honey. Please put your hands together for Kay, everyone. This does not happen a lot, but you have left me speechless. That was Kay, people. Another round of applause. Well, it's a good thing I didn't leave when Reynolds started his nonsense. This kid can sing. Oh, hi, Mr. Mackey. Yeah, she's awesome. Well, it's good to see someone flourish, but I'd rather be home right now. Isn't it fun to step out every once in a while? 
Smoking a pipe and reading a proper book is the only acceptable way to spend a Sunday evening in September. Bert, thank you so much for coming. I know you'd rather be somewhere else right now. That's okay, kid. I don't regret it one bit. You did great. But ladies, if you'll excuse me, I'm out of here. Good night, Bert. Thanks again. And now for an announcement. I'm serious, so hush now. Now, you all know that Kay has been working here at the diner for quite a while now. In fact, she was my anchor after Stan left us. And I think the time has come to formally announce right here that I will put your name above the door of this place, honey, where it belongs. Kay's place, Mo Kay's. We haven't settled on a name yet, but there you go. Another round of applause. And have some drinks with us. Kay's place, huh? Congratulations. That was quite a surprise. Yeah, I told you. Mo asked me like a gazillion times, right? Kind of felt right this time. We haven't hashed out any details, as you might have noticed. <laughs> But it feels good, you know? I have to hand it to you. You were great. I have to go in a bit, but let me know when the next gig is, yeah? You're not leaving already, are you? The fun's just starting. Oh, wait. Of course. Big day tomorrow, right? You know what you're going to do? Honestly? Well... Wait, I'm not good at this stuff, so I just want to say... It was good to have you back these past weeks, and really good. You just do what you feel you have to do. I'm just glad we reconnected. Promise you'll keep in touch, whatever the outcome, yeah? Of course. And remember, time marches, marches on. on. <laughs> See you, Kay. Thanks. For everything. people the time has come for the open mic part of the evening to end ashley was going to do a ventriloquist bit next but i just heard he hurt his hand back in his cabin let me thank you again for joining us and there's plenty of food and drink to go around I sure do hope they're keeping things proper in there while I'm taking a breather. So, you had fun? It was okay. You sound a bit pensive, darling. I had a great evening. Thanks, Maureen. I think I'm gonna go hit the hay. Early start. Something on your mind, hon? No, I'm fine, honestly. Big day tomorrow, is all. How did things end up with Kay? You could tell me to mind my own, of course. It's just that that girl is like a daughter to me. We talked, yeah. I think a lot has happened since those days we used to spend out in the watchtower. I'll always cherish that time, but I think that's it for me and Kay. I hope you're not too disappointed. Because, you know, you can be a scary woman. <laughs> Listen, you're two grown women. And if that's the choice you two ended up on, I can only respect that. Speaking of choices, you've got a big day in the morning, don't you? Know what you're gonna do yet? Stick around? Move back? Absolutely. Not a speck of doubt. Well then, Miss Wise, I salute your resolve. Even if it means I'm leaving? Sure, hon. Listen, I'd love to have you around. You know that. But you have to do things because you want to. Or because you feel you need to do them for yourself. You don't owe any of us anything. I will miss you, Maureen. I best get back inside. You take care now, Meredith Wise. Take care, Maureen.
Dear Meredith Weiss, thank you for participating in our annual photography contest. Your wonderful picture did not win the grand prize, but you are still a winner. The attached voucher gives you a 20% discount to our autumn course. Sign up today and never take a blurry picture again. David Gillespie, Photography for Beginners, Inc. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday I placed a bet on the Angels and won. But they played again yesterday and I let it ride and then they lost. They're playing again tonight and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. You're a gambling addict beyond salvation. Ha <laughs> ha, Meredith. I guess you're right, and I guess I don't mind. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Ah, oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But... I understand. What are you going to do? Back to my home, my job, and my life in the big city. So I guess you're going back to the future, eh? Computers, living in the fast lane. Can't say that I envy you. Although it must be nice to live close to a major ballpark. Do you need a ride to the airport? Yes, please. Only if we can talk about something other than baseball. All right, go grab your stuff and let's go. So, if you're leaving, what's going to happen to the sea turtle? I don't know. Do you have any ideas? You could leave it in storage here or put it up for sale. Give it to someone else who will use it. Are you hinting at something, Lori? Well, you can store it at our place if you want. We have enough space. Or I might use it to hide from my parents every once in a while. That'd be great, Lori. That way, I know that the sea turtle will be in the best place it could be while I'm gone. For sure. And you won't mind if I use it sometimes, right? Maybe I'll tinker on it a little? You can use it, but no big changes. It's perfect this way. All right, this is going to be fun. Hey, Meredith, I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Wagons West! So, here we are again, heading the other way. Aren't you going to miss it here? Probably. It feels odd to be leaving again. I wouldn't want to leave this place, not for a million bucks. Well, wait, no, two million bucks should be enough. Do you believe money can buy happiness? That's a good question. Give me a big pile of cash right now and I'll feel real happy. And I'm sure it'll last a couple of days, but then it'll probably start to wear off and I'll be back to complaining about the weather before you know it. But it's probably nicer to complain about the weather when you're living in a big old mansion. Hey, what's this honking clown up to? Move out of the way, you lunatic! Wait a minute. That's Robert Harris. Yeah, yeah, I'm pulling over. Sorry about that, Frank. Hope it didn't scare you. That's okay, Robert. I'm a road rage veteran. But, uh, what's all this about? It's not about you, Frank. I need to talk to Meredith. Oh, okay. I'll go have a smoke. Hey, Meredith. This is gonna sound super awkward, and hopeless, and desperate, and probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that 
I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I've made up my mind about this. I'm leaving PL. Yeah, okay, yeah. I sort of kind of figured you'd say that. Sorry, Robert. I know this will sound like crap, but I'm sure you'll find someone else. Thanks, Meredith. Well, I better get back to work again. Take care. You too, Robert. Okay, Meredith. Let's get you to the airport. I've got a double shift today, and the mail doesn't deliver itself. Sorry for button in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own KF. Dear Meredith Weiss, thank you for participating in our annual photography contest. Your wonderful picture did not win the grand prize, but you are still a winner. The attached voucher gives you a 20% discount to our autumn course. Sign up today and never take a blurry picture again. David Gillespie, Photography for Beginners, Inc. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday I placed a bet on the Angels and won. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride, and then they lost. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. And betting against the pattern pays off, White Sox. Okay, Meredith, thanks. I'll go with that. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job. And that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. And yes, I want to wear it a bit longer. Fantastic. So you'll be delivering the mail today? I'll give HR a call and tell them the vacancy is filled. Eh, eh not so fast, Frank. It's under one condition. If you get in a predicament with Walter Morgan again, you're on your own. Ha, <laughs> you got it. I'll have Morgan for breakfast. Now, let's get to work. The mail doesn't deliver itself. Okay, let's see what today's weather will be like. P.O. people, good morning. Today's weather will be nothing short of gorgeous. And I can't wait to go outside and head out to the acres. But not before sharing, you know what? P.O. positive or pet peeve? I don't need callers for today's P.O. Positive. I'm picking it myself. <laughs> I'm talking about Moe's open mic last night. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. And I'm sorry if I offended anyone with my jokes. Well, no, actually, I am not sorry. <laughs> not sorry at all. Thank you much, Moe and Kay, for hosting it. It's just one of the things that makes Providence Oaks the best place in the world. Have a great day. Ah. Uh... <laughs> you tell him, Jack. What's this guy up to? Wait, is that Robert? Y yeah, yeah, Robert, I'll pull over. Hey, Meredith, sorry about that. I hope it didn't scare you. This better be good, Robert. Well, Frank told me you're leaving. This is gonna sound super awkward. And hopeless. And desperate. And... Probably a lot more things, but I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. I... wait, what? You're not going? Yep. It's nice here. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, great. Well, I might as well blurt it all out. I like you. A lot.
I didn't want to give in to it. I've been through a rough breakup once, and I didn't want to risk ever feeling like that again. So, what do you propose? That I just get in your car right now? I wasn't gonna propose, but yeah, Meredith, I'd love that. I can't do that, Robert. Not right now. You know what? I'll call you. Okay, Meredith, I understand. And yeah, calling sounds good. Have a great day. Thanks, Robert. Sorry for button in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from my... Dear Meredith Weiss, thank you for participating in our annual photography contest. Your wonderful picture did not win the grand prize, but you are still a winner. The attached voucher gives you a 20% discount to our autumn course. Sign up today and never take a blurry picture again. David Gillespie, Photography for Beginners, Inc. Good morning, Meredith. You won't believe the weekend I had. Saturday, I placed a bet on the White Sox, just like you said, and lost. But they played again yesterday, and I let it ride. And then they won. They're playing again tonight, and now I don't know what to do anymore. Well, Frank, the pattern is obvious. And betting against the pattern pays off. White Sox. Okay, Meredith, thanks. I'll go with that. Speaking of gambling, I bet you're taking the job, and that's not just because you're wearing your coat. I love the coat, Frank. But no, I'm taking it off. I'm leaving Providence Oaks again. Ah, oh, that's not what I was hoping to hear, Meredith. But I understand. What are you gonna do? Well, actually, I'm, uh... The van? So you're staying in the delivery business? No, wait. That's an RV. Yep. I'm getting on it, and I'm not sure where I'll stop. So, I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye, Frank. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, too, Meredith. Goodbye. Here she is. The sea turtle in all of her glory. Do you like her? I love her, Lori. She's amazing. Yay! Hey, Meredith, I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too, Lori. It was really fun watching that movie and working on the RV with you. <laughs> Me too. Besides, you'll be back sometime, right? Of course. I have to check on my favorite engineer. You mean me? Ha! I'd love that. Safe travels, Meredith. Thank you, Lori. See you around. Okay, let's see what today's weather will be like. P.O. people, good morning! Today's weather will be nothing short of gorgeous. And I can't wait to go outside and head out to the acres. But not before sharing, you know what? P.O. positive or pet peeve? I don't need callers for today's P.O. positive. I'm picking it myself. <laughs> and I'm choosing our very own mail carrier, Meredith Weiss, who's leaving P.O. She's only been here for two weeks, and we're already going to have to miss her. She's going on new adventures. I'm not sure you'll hear this, Meredith, but on behalf of all the people in P.O., well, almost all. Thank you so much, and all the best. Oh, good old Jack. What's this guy up to? Wait, is that Robert? Y yeah, yeah, Robert, I'll pull over.
Hey, Meredith, sorry about that. I hope it didn't scare you. This better be good, Robert. Well, Frank told me you're leaving. This is gonna sound super awkward. And hopeless. And desperate. And probably a lot more things, but... I don't want you to leave. I've decided a while ago that I'm done with stuff like this, but I guess it's not something you can decide. Robert, that's so sweet of you, but I've made up my mind about this. I'm leaving P.O. Yeah, okay, yeah. I sort of kind of figured you'd say that. Sorry, Robert. I know this will sound like crap, but I'm sure you'll find someone else. Thanks, Meredith. Well, I better get back to work again. Take care. Thanks, Robert. And let me know if the apartment troubles start again. Sorry for button in, folks, but I've got a special treat for y'all. I just updated my playlist. This new song is from our very own Kay Evans. 